Hello, my name's Rishi, and welcome to Vlogmas. Hello friends! As you know if you watch many of my videos, I love recommending books. I have so many videos where I recommend you books in a certain theme. I will leave my playlist of recommendations in the cards above. Um, it's one of my favourite things about this channel is recommending books. So I thought it would be fun to be a bit more specific and recommend books to some of you. So in a couple of my videos and on Instagram I asked for uh, requests for recommendations and you guys came through. Um, so I've got nine eight or nine different recommendations to give today um, and I probably will ramble on about a lot of books because it's my favourite thing to do. So I'm going to recommend books to the people who've requested them here in this video and if you would like also a personal recommendation then leave something in the comments below and I will respond to you um, as well. Maybe these will be in time for Christmas or maybe these will just be some books that you guys can add to your 2021 TBR. So without further ado let's get into the requests. So the first request I have is from Carrie Monnier. Sorry if I'm pronouncing names wrong, I'm just reading them from the screen. Carrie is someone who comments on a lot of my videos, so I'm really pleased to recommend something to them. Carrie would like a recommendation for a coming of age novel. Jane Eyre is their favourite book and they named their daughter after they named their daughter Frances after the protagonist in A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. So they like historical fiction and classics. I also love historical fiction and classics, so I think we might be able to find something for you. Um, in terms of coming of age novels, I loved when I was coming of age myself, A Gathering Light by Jennifer Donnelly, which is also known as A Northern Light in North America, if that's where you are. This tells the story of Matty Gorky, a young girl growing up in a poor rural community in the Adirondacks in Northern New York State. She lost her mother as a young child and she um her father has turned to drink to deal with the tragedy of losing her wife and also his traumatic childhood. Matty as the oldest has to kind of run the farm and keep everything going but all she really wants is to escape. The novel is set, this is in the 19th century or the early 20th century, I can't quite remember, um, and it flashes back and forth between when uh, Matty is a teenager and about her life and wanting to go to school, wanting to learn, it, being pulled between the responsibility of being basically in charge of all of her younger siblings on the farm, um, and forward when she is working in a hotel because she lives in a rural part but the town closest to where she lives is a tourist destination and so she, um, people come there in the summer um, and one of the guests at the hotel handed her a bundle of letters and then went missing, presumably drowned in a lake. Um, and so it flashes back and forward between this and we learn about the mystery of what happened to this girl and her life as well as Matty's coming of age and her growing up in this time and her wanting to escape where she lives. It is so beautifully written. If you love books with beautiful nature writing I would recommend this one definitely. I feel like the characters are really great and it's one that I definitely want to reread. I would also recommend Oranges Are Not The Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. This is a semi-autobiographical novel of Jeanette's experience being adopted as a young child into an extremely passionate, even evangelical community where she experiences abuse um, and she also um, is coming to terms with the fact that she is a gay woman and her experience with of relationships with other women and of discovering who she is and feeling like she has to leave her community that doesn't accept her for who she is. It is kind of a bit weird, a bit um, fabulous. There are definitely elements of like religious visions and other visions that are kind of very confused in this child Jeanette's mind um, and it is set in I think it's the 1950s and 60s in the north of England so if you like historical fiction um, because the time period is so well felt and it is so beautiful and moving and funny as well there's a lot of tragedy in this but it is also very very funny and I would also recommend if you really want a big long classic coming of age novel David Copperfield by Charles Dickens this is also a semi-autobiographical novel about Charles Dickens's life um, and it follows David Copperfield from when he is very well actually from just before he is born um, when his father dies up until he is um, a grown adult and it follows him through the course of his life through all the tragedies the missteps the um, machinations against him it is um, a, his coming of age novel his discovering who is he is and his making of his own mistakes um, and his learning from them but it is also a novel about 19th century Britain and what it was like to grow up in that time and um, the the laissez-faire capitalist system and how that affected the poor um, it is it, it, there is a lot of social commentary. It is also another funny novel and one that I would take slowly because the comedy does repeat itself so if you read it too quickly it could become a bit repetitive but I think spread out over the course of a winter it is um, a beautiful coming of age. The next request I have is from Han Painter who says I would love a recommendation for a dark and challenging read. Something reminiscent of Ghost Walls by Sarah Moss and The Discomfort of Evening by Marika Lucas Reinevelt. 
never said that name out loud um that really doesn't shy away from depictions of strained family relationships both books have disturbed me greatly but the candor and unflinching portrayal of the character's vulnerabilities makes books such as these favorites of mine so I've never read either of those books, so I can't say that these definitely will be for fans of those books, but for difficult family relationships and um, really flawed characters and a sense of unease and discomfort, I can definitely do that. So I would recommend to you Weather by Jenny Offal. This is the story of a woman who is working as a librarian when she also gets hired to answer letters um, from people to this woman's podcast where she talks about climate change. Although climate change is kind of the theme of the novel, it's really not centre stage and is more like an uncomfortable hum that goes through this whole novel. This novel is about our main character and her disconnection from her family and her disconnection from everyone around her. There is um, a relationship with an alcoholic brother involved in this book and um, there are just lots of very strained, tense relationships. It is a book that makes you feel uncomfortable the whole way through, even though it is a very short novel. And it is about the um, selfishness and self-involvement of people and the willful blindness to the um, things that are happening in the world. And our main character is a very selfish self-involved woman who makes a lot of terrible decisions um, and I think that that would fulfill your desire for uncomfortable reading about difficult characters. I would also recommend The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This tells the story of two twin sisters who live in a town where people are trying to be as light-skinned as possible and they run away. One of the sisters marries a very dark-skinned black man and has a dark-skinned black child and comes back to the town and the other woman um, marries a white man and passes as white um, and it is about difficult relationships it is about racism in america it is set in the 60s 70s and 80s there is also a trans character in here and it's a bit about that as well but mostly it is about what makes a person identity the secrets that we hide difficult relationships there is abuse there is lynching there is a lot of really okay so my uh, phone just told me i ran out of storage so i might this setup might look a bit different now but we're gonna keep going if you like historical fiction as well as these dark, uh, complicated relationships, then I would recommend The Confessions of Franny Langton by Sarah Collins. This is a reimagining of what a gothic novel can be. It is um, set in 1826 about a woman called Franny Langton, she has been an enslaved woman in Jamaica on a, in a place called Paradise, where she but she is taken to um, England and given as a gift to a man, even though slavery is technically outlawed in England, um, to work in his house. At the beginning, we know that the man and his wife have both been killed. And this is Franny writing her story about what happened because she has been accused of these murders. Um, it is a very, very dark novel. It is a novel about slavery and about race science, about the abuses that white scientists put black people through. It's about terrible people who were justifying the terrible things that they were doing. It is just a novel basically about cruelty, but it is incredibly beautifully written. It is incredibly powerful and it is written like a gothic novel and takes a lot of inspiration from different gothic novels. But from the perspective of a black woman telling her story um, and it also involves a queer relationship and it's about the relationships between black and white people in England after slavery was outlawed um, but not really condemned socially. It's about how even people you love can be terrible people um, so I think it sounds like it's exactly what you were requesting. So then Laura Dutton asked for the recommendation, do I know of any books set in wintry locations like The Bear and The Nightingale? Well, I've recently just put up a video about 10 winter books, which I will leave in the cards above. Not all of them are set in wintry locations, but they are all perfect for this time of year. Um, so I will try not to repeat myself too much, but I would definitely recommend if you like books set in wintry locations, it really depends what kind of book you're looking for. If you want post-apocalyptic sci-fi set in a um, First Nations Reservation in Northern Ontario, I would recommend Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wabgeshik Rice, a novel of incredible tension about when the power, the phone lines, the internet all cut out at once and nobody knows why. There is not a huge amount of sci-fi in, no explanation for what has happened. Um, it is more about people dealing with these situations and the closeness of this community and what happens when white people arrive trying to take advantage of these, first these um, Anishinaabe people's knowledge and resources. If you want some cosy non-fiction, I would recommend The Christmas Chronicles by Nigel Slater, which is about his uh, winters growing up and also now about slow living with some beautiful pictures and recipes in. It's an incredibly cosy book and it is not all about Christmas. It goes from November through to the beginning of February. So there's definitely a lot of wintry goodness in there too. If you want a children's adventure book, then I would recommend The Wolves of Willoughby Chase, which is one that I absolutely loved when I was a child. It's a classic children's book published in 1952 
and tells the story of a grand but remote place called Willoughby Chase and in England where wolves still roam. The lord and lady of the house are taking a holiday in warmer climates and so the daughter of the house has been left in the care of a nasty housekeeper when her cousin comes to visit. And they embark on ice skating and um, it's a really snowy wintry book. With the help of Mr Grimshaw, a mysterious man from the train, Miss Slycarp takes over this household, dismissing all but the most untrustworthy household servants threatening to arrest those who defy her wearing lady green's gowns and tampering with sir willoughby's legal papers bonnie and sylvia also overhear ominous hints about their parents ship which has sunk perhaps intentionally so they have to try and discover what's going on and also to escape it is a really good romp of a book and there is a lot of sinister wolves and wintry adventures um, and then if you would like some creepy, dark horror fantasy, I would recommend Melmoth by Sarah Perry, which is set in the Czech Republic during the course of one winter and tells the story of Melmoth, this creature who comes to guilty people and makes them feel terrible guilt. This English woman who's living in the Czech Republic and her friend comes to her frantic because he's discovered these papers about Melmoth and it explores um, what one man did during the Nazi occupation of the Czech Republic. Um, there is a bit about the Armenian genocide um, and bit set in Indonesia but most of it is set in a very cold Prague winter um, and so if you like something a bit menacing and ominous in your wintry locations then I would recommend Melmoth by Sarah Perry. Laura M says I would appreciate any book recommendations for an art lover I'm especially interested in painting. Now there are lots of brilliant non-fiction books about art and painting I am sure but I have not read very much non-fiction so I'm just going to re recommend you some fiction books that I believe art lovers would enjoy. The first one you probably have already read if you love books about art and that is The Girl with the Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. This tells the story of Greet, a young serving woman in um, Vermeer's household who ends up being the subject of the painting The Girl with the Pearl Earring. Obviously this is all imagined, it's not true to the history of what happened but it is just a reimagining because nobody knows who The Girl with the Pearl Earring in the painting is. This story is set so perfectly in the 16th century in uh, the Netherlands and I think it is so beautifully rendered um, and although the relationship between Greet and Vermeer is very uncomfortable to read about considering she is 15 but um, I think that it is definitely one that if you love painting you would really enjoy the beautiful sumptuous descriptions. I would also recommend The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde which is about a painting but also about sin. <laughs> it is a, such a great romp of a novel I feel like. It is about a man, Dorian Gray, who is so handsomely beautiful. A man paints his painting at the beginning and they talk about beauty and his beauty and how it's going to fade and something happens that means that his painting gets older and his painting suffers for all the sins he lives while he continues to look young and beautiful and get more and more devilish doing terrible terrible things while his painting grows to a terrible creepy old man and he stays young and handsome. Uh, it is kind of a fairy tale almost there is definitely a fairy tale element to it and a brilliantly wicked Victorian novel and I would also recommend How to Be Both by Ali Smith which is definitely a book for art lovers there are two periods in this book there is one set in Renaissance Italy and one set in modern day in Cambridge and it is um, sometimes you'll read it with the uh, Renaissance first and Cambridge after and sometimes you'll read it with Cambridge first and the Renaissance after, be after because they were published both ways um, and so it really depends which one you pick up. The Renaissance tells the story of Francisco who is working on a fresco in Italy in the Renaissance and the uh, other one tells the story of George, a girl who has recently lost her mother and who they visited that fresco in Italy and she fell in love with it. Um, it's a lot about gender, about art, about what makes art, about who's allowed to make art and it is also about mother-daughter relationships and uh, it's a very, there's a lot going on in this novel. I know Ali Smith writes a lot about art. How to be both is the only one I've read, but it's one that I absolutely love, although it is quite strange. Bookie Tracy asked, do you have any recommendation of a book set in a location like the Merseys? Well, I do have a whole video of books set in isolated locations, which I will leave in the cards above if you'd like to go and check that out. The one that I think is most like the Mercies is The Island Child by Molly Aitken, which is set in an, on an island off the coast of Ireland and is about Una, a girl who grows up in this small fishing community that is kind of tugging between the Catholic religion um, and the older religion um, and in 
it's set in the middle of the 20th century but there are still older traditions that go on a belief in fairies and not wanting to go to the graveyard because um, of the spirits that lurk there but also the ever-present Catholicism that is keeping women trapped in their place. It is another very dark novel that includes a lot of violence against women and um, has that kind of mysterious um, kind of magical feel floating over it because there are elements of Irish folklore woven into the narrative. So it's very similar in a lot of the themes to the Mercies, isolated locations, small communities, Christianity and other religions and women um, and folklore. So I think if you liked one, you will definitely enjoy the other. I would also recommend Pine by Francine Toon, which is kind of a literary thriller set in a small remote Highland village where the main girl, Lauren, her mother went missing 10 years previously and her father is kind of suspected by the town of being involved with it. Um, and then one day another girl, Mary Ann, goes missing. Um, it's set over the course of a winter, it's very cold um, and there is a lot of threat and ominousness going on and also kind of a magical feel of ghosts and witchery going on in it as well. It's If you like a thriller that has a bit more um, of a beautiful atmosphere then I would definitely recommend this book. It's not the most thrilling of thrillers but it is definitely such a haunting beautiful atmosphere and set in a rural remote location much like the Mercies. And then if you're up for something a bit weird I would recommend Summer Light and then comes the night which is about a town of 400 people in Iceland over the course of a year um, and it follows various different people from this town. It is a very very weird novel. Um, it's written in such a strange way and lots of really strange things happen but if you like isolated locations and kind of unsure whether something supernatural is happening or not and weird relationships and characters that don't feel like real people I would definitely recommend this one. I I adored it but I understand that it is very weird and niche. Uh, Jocelyn Kaur said do you have any book recommendations or books you've previously loved that are set in New York? It's because I'm so fascinated the city and I really enjoy books that are set in New York. There are of course lots of books set in New York. Breakfast at Tiffany's, um, The Great Gatsby, uh, Brooklyn, Column to Bean. So there is definitely a lot but you've probably read those if you are really interested in New York. You might have read these two but these are the ones I'm going to recommend and that is If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin which tells the story of a man who has been falsely accused of rape and imprisoned and his fiance and her family who are trying to get him out. It is a story of New York in the 19... 70s I believe it's set and it is about uh, race segregation and the um, police abuse of powers and what they will do but it is also a love letter to New York and the area in which these people live. Um, they grew up in New York and it really shows a very different side of New York than you often get in classics like F. Scott Fitzgerald but I think it is a beautiful moving novel and so I would definitely recommend it. I would also recommend The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton which is set in the turn of the century, turn of the 19th to the 20th century and is a classic I don't hear as many people talking about but definitely one I would recommend. It is about Newland Archer who is a lawyer and an heir to one of New York City's great fortunes um, and he is going to marry the beautiful and sheltered Mae Wellard but he finds reason to doubt his choice of bri bride after the Countess Ellen Olenska, May's exotic and beautiful and beautiful 30 year old cousin. Olenska strikes Archer as the opposite of the innocent and ignorant May Welland. Ellen has returned to New York from Europe after scandalously separating herself from a disastrous marriage to a Polish count. It is about a small society of really rich people who are all watching each other. Um, it is about um, their obsession with wealth and rank and gossip um, and it is incredibly well written and I definitely loved the characters in this book so I would recommend that if you love a classic. And then one that isn't a classic but is historical fiction and if you enjoy that I would recommend Golden, Golden Hill by Frances Spufford which is set in New York of the early... I think it's the early 18th century. I can't quite remember the dates, but it is when New York only has 10,000 inhabitants as opposed to the million of London at the same period. And it's about a man who comes with a promissory note for a thousand pounds that he cannot explain where he, where he comes from and or how he got the money. Um, and he kind of goes on a romp around New York. <laughs> and it is about racism and slavery again um, and also it is written as an 18th century novel so the language is so brilliant and he gets himself into all sorts of terrible scrapes <laughs> and I think it's brilliant it's so funny and clever um, and so brilliantly written I would definitely recommend that and it's an interesting way to look at New York not the New York of skyscrapers but the New York of um, a small port town um, so I definitely would recommend that. And then finally, Lee Morris said, I'm so interested in food security and creating sustainable communities. Um, I mentioned in the video where she, where they commented um, about 
the importance of that at the moment. Do you have a book recommendation, fiction or non-fiction, that touches on either or both of the above issues? I have to admit that most of my knowledge of this sort of thing comes from articles and podcasts rather than from books themselves. There are a few that I um, haven't read but um, have been meaning to. So We Are The Weather by Jonathan Safran Fur, which is one that I know Lena Norms recommends a lot, um, which is about food and climate change and our relation to it. But I have read Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer and the way that he writes is so accessible and also doesn't have the same like guilt and shaming that you can get from a lot of books about this sort of thing. People who will twist facts in order to try and make it seem even more shameful that you're eating meat or whatever. This is not like that but it is a very scary one from what I've heard. Um, then also How Did We Get Into This Mess by Georges Monbiot which is one that I have read um, and really really enjoyed. It's a collection of his essays. Um, not all of them are about food security but they are all about climate change, um, our, our political situation and it does talk about sustainable communities and food specifically in a few of the essays. I love the way George Monbiot writes um, and so I would definitely recommend his writing. And then also More Than Just Food, Food Justice and Community Change by Garrett Broad. Um, which is about the industrial food system and the crisis in the United States of food deserts for the marginalised people. Um, and it's kind of about community rebuilding and how we do that. I haven't read any of those books, but they are definitely on my TBR. And I will also leave links in the description below to articles talking about lots of books on this subject. It's not something that I personally can recommend that many books on, but I definitely share your desire to read more about this. And it's definitely something that I'm aiming to do next year. So that is it. That is a very long video where I recommended you guys some books. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope those of you that I recommended books to have found something that you would like to read. And those of you who are just watching have found something you would like to read as well. Like I said at the beginning, leave a comment if you would like any more recommendations and I will definitely try and get back to you with something brilliant. And uh, remember to like this video if you liked it and to subscribe because as, I, as you know, I'm doing Vlogmas. So I'll be here every day until Christmas and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.